G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're going to continue exploring the API in Revit just using another example. Um, as I've been going through these examples, I've come to realize that nearly every scenario with the Revit API is quite unique. Um, so I will be trying to find a few tutorials I can show you shortly, probably in about a week or two, that cover some more generic methods. Um, but I thought first I'd show you a three-part workflow that I've used um, in order to explore the API further to show an example with a bit more context. So we're just focusing on our Python and Dynamo series, but if you haven't seen my fundamental series or before, I um, highly recommend you do some catching up. So part four, room boundaries. So in this one, we're gonna navigate the Revit API docs again. Um, we're gonna go a little bit deeper, look at some extra classes, um, in particular, the spatial boundary element and location classes. Um, we're gonna look at just unwrapping some rooms, uh, obtaining the area calculation settings in a project, and then also obtaining room bounding curves by this setting and returning what, what, what we call a prototype back to Dynamo. Um, so we're gonna be using a couple of generic methods, but also some very specific methods to rooms. Um, so let's just get straight into the example. So um, this is the first part of three. So the goal of this workflow that I've developed is to take all the rooms on a particular floor or just from a selection in Dynamo um, and then generate area boundary lines to match the room boundaries and then place areas as uh, rooms as areas and match their name and number. Uh, this is a really common workflow that we had to do manually um, at a lot of companies I worked at where we had area plans that were being maintained in tandem with rooms. Um, which doesn't always happen, but in some projects and some offices, it's the way they do things. So as well as that, um, in this case, we're gonna need to obtain what, what are called the boundary segments. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna be using rooms, which are a spatial element class in this case on the API docs. And we're gonna obtain the boundary segments um, using the get boundary segments method. And you can see that we're gonna have to specify an option. So I'll touch on that shortly, because that's essentially gonna be what we call an enumeration option. Um, as well as this, we're going to have to actually get the boundary curves. Um, so we're going to get the boundary segment class and we're going to use the get curve method of that class in order to obtain the Revit curves that we can process back to Dynamo. Um, and then we're going to be turning them into what we call a prototype. So this is one method you can use to convert Revit geometry back into respective Dynamo geometry classes um, to preview on the canvas. Um, we're going to need to be actually analyzing what the area setting the project we use is. Um, you could obviously go to Dynamo and just skip this entire workflow by just saying get my room by finish boundary, by core boundary. But I did find in the past that this was a bit of a cumbersome method because not every project used the same area calculation methods. For example, um, some clients in residential, for example, wanted to calculate to center of wall. Um, but other, other clients in other projects like residential small scale wanted to calculate the free area between the walls of their project. So it's better to be able to derive this setting from the project. Um, so we're gonna have to actually inspect the area volume settings class. So this is the, the, um, the documents setting um, that, that, that it holds this value in. And we're gonna have to go pretty deep on this setting actually. We're gonna have to look at a few properties and methods in order to obtain the option that's currently active that we'll send back to our boundary collection. Um, so we need to obtain the spatial element boundary option as a setting. Um, in this case, it's gonna be an enumerated property. So we do need to go and look at what's called uh, an enumerated property or a enumeration value. Um, I don't know the precise term for it. I just tend to call it an enumerated property. Um, an enumeration is essentially something in, in Revit um, API or DB, whatever you call it. Um, where it has a, a fixed set of options available. You can't just pass any value into this. It's actually a property that has a very limited set of options. For example, the, the options we saw earlier for how we calculate the area um, in our room settings are actually an enumeration because we just have the four settings with a specific name and a description. So let's just get started. Um, so we're just gonna jump in and start preparing this. Uh, but on the Revit API docs, uh, sorry, I just listened to some music there. <laughs> Love that song. Um, you can see we're just looking mostly at this spatial element boundary location enumeration method. 
And you can see those four members that we're going to be trying to find out the one that we're specifically using. It's a little bit of an abstract method. It's a little bit hard to explain, but I'll do my best along the way to follow it. I'll, I'll be honest, I had to learn from another resource how to do this part of the workflow, uh, but I'll do my best to explain what I've figured out as I've sort of studied it more and then applied it to collecting the boundaries of a room. But in this case, the method really was me starting with the room class um, and look, finding out it was a spatial element class. So finding out that I needed the spatial boundaries um, of the room and then sort of working backwards until I got to the very bottom of that, that example, which was the, the spatial element boundary option to get the curves to apply to the boundary curves of the spatial element as the room. So sort of working backwards through the classes um, by looking at the various members and references that are available on Revit API docs. Anyway, enough talking, I'll jump into it. So what I've got here is just the, the Autodesk basic sample project. And I've got a floor plan with rooms and I've got an area plan currently with no area boundaries or areas. So our goal in this one is just gonna be to get the boundaries of our rooms. And then in the next part, we'll get the area boundary curves onto our area plan from these curves. And in the third part, we'll place rooms to their equivalent position on an area plan. So in this case, I'm collecting rooms um, just by level. So I'm using a node from Archilab. In this case, it's the selects by category and level. So we're just getting the rooms that belong to this floor um, because area plans don't really have a level associated to the area. It's really just that the area belongs to the view that you place it in. So in this case, I'm working on level one, for example. Um, you could use some more API to derive the level of the area plan that's currently active or take an area plan and find out its respective area and then go and get the rooms by level. But it's a few more steps, so we're going to keep it a bit more simple. So let's just go and make a Python, a Python node. Um, thanks for people that hung in through that explanation. <laughs> Took a while. Um, okay, so I'm just going to edit my Python script node and I'll just expand this up. So I'm just gonna keep my template for now. Um, you'll recall that in earlier parts, I showed you sort of how to set up just a, a basic template. Um, so I like to keep this just while I work. Um, we do know we won't need a few things in this workflow. So we're just gonna get rid of our UI app, our app and our UI doc. We're also just gonna get rid of our UI API references just to keep things a little bit tidier. And also we don't need systems collection and we don't need um, the syspath appending. So we'll just keep these up here for now. Okay, so we've, collect, we've already collected our active document using document document. What I'm gonna do now is just collect um, my inputs. In this case, I'm just gonna collect um, some rooms from Dynamo. So I'm just gonna do rooms underscore D equals, and I'm gonna use that little statement I like using, which is, it's, it's the first input, which is our rooms, um, but only, if it's a list of rooms, which in this case it is, um, but we do need to build the workflow so that it could handle just one room on its own. Um, so we'll say that is, ins is instance, uh, the input and list to check if it's a list. Otherwise, we'll start a list with a square bracket and we'll get our input as a list. So that, that makes sure that we can always iterate over what we're doing, as you've seen a few times already. So we're gonna get our rooms in Revit and we're gonna be using unwrap element in this case, and we're gonna run this over the Dynamo rooms, and this will create, uh, it will enable the rooms to be accessed by the Revit API rather than Dynamo. So we need to do this every time we interact with a, a Revit element using the API. Okay, so the next part's a little bit tricky. So what we're gonna be doing, I'm just gonna get rid of these transaction lines. We don't need them. Um, so I'm just gonna be getting the settings. So I'll just put a comment there with a hashtag. So the first thing we need to do is get the settings of, um, of these spatial element calculations. So we're gonna go, to, we're gonna define a variable as settings, and we're just gonna call on the Autodesk Revit DB namespace, just to be specific. And now we need that area volume settings uh, to get the element. So we're specifying uh, here that we wanna use the method get area volume settings, and we can see there it is. And in this case, we're just calling on the settings of our document. And we can keep running just to make sure we don't trigger any warnings. In this case, I'll just say that out is equal to one. Otherwise it'll trigger a warning because the variable doesn't exist because um, I just call it element by default. Um, and then what we're gonna do now is just collect the options that are available um, for that enumerated spatial element boundary collection uh, enumeration. 
So again, we're just going to call on audio describe a DB. And we're going to call on spatial element boundary options. And we can see that these are options that can be spiced, can be passed. Uh, I just can't, can't get that back again to a spatial element boundary calculator. So this is why we need to obtain the options so that we can figure out the enumerated option that's currently active in our settings. I'll just get the um, the boundary option now. So I'm just going to do B underscore option for boundary option. I'm going to say this equals to our settings. But then we're going to apply the method of get the spatial element boundary location. And in this case, we need to specify that the spatial element type, which again is an enumerated property, is room. So I can show you that really quickly in the Revit API docs, because that's another example of an enumer enumerated property that, a property that you need to specify. Um, and we can see here that spatial element type is an enumeration, and these are our options, so room, area, or space, the three um, area storage categories in, in Revit, essentially. So there we go. So the last thing that we need to do is actually set uh, the property um, of the options that we're going to pass to our method of calculating our, our room boundaries. Um, so we're going to say of the options, we want to set the spatial element boundary location. So we need to use this in our function coming up. And we're going to set this just to the option that we've retrieved um, from the enumerated collection of the boundary options that is currently active in our model. And at the moment, we've just got that boundary option. If, if we do um, currently just show, I guess, the boundary option, it shouldn't be an element that's passable in Dynamo, but it should still be able to show us that it's, a, I think, a DB element. It's just, there you go. So you can see at the moment we're working with our finish. If I get an object type node, I can see what, what that type of element actually is. So you can see in this case, it's an Autodesk Revit DB spatial element boundary location um, element. So we have successfully collected that as a, a Revit DB element that the Revit API can handle in our next step. Um, so that's probably the, the most confusing or difficult part um, of this workflow. I hope I've explained it the best I can. Um, if anyone else has additional input there, feel free to leave it in the comments if you can explain it better than I can, because then the rest of the, the script makes a lot more sense. We're working with a much more standard method. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just build an empty list. So I'll just, I'll just call this section of my script uh, get curves. I'm just going to say that we're going to make a curves list, which is going to be a list of lists of all the curves per room. So what we're going to do now is just we're going to set up a function to collect all the curves from the boundary elements surrounding our rooms. So we're going to go for room in rooms underscore r. So we're calling on our list of rooms from Revit back here. So the unwrapped rooms from Dynamo. So we're going to do colon. Inset tab. We're going to define another list um, for each of the rooms to collect the curves at the end. So now we need to get the curves, but we've got an empty list to fill using an append, append method. So we're gonna say for, and in this case, we're just gonna define a local variable as boundary list. So we're building a list of spatial boundary elements. And we're gonna say in room. So we're calling back on our local variable within our first, first level um, of this function. So in this case, we're just defining the local variable. So we're getting the room from the room list and then we're going to use get boundary segments method. And this is that method that requires our, our option from our enumeration back here. So that's why we're obtaining the options here. So um, that's pretty much pretty much it. Um, that's where we've where we've um, got that element from. So that was all just to get the option to find out what bounding option is currently active in the project. So quite a lot of work. Um, and then for the boundary list, we're going to get each boundary curve. So we need to actually go and get the bound. Um, I'm just going to call it bound, but each piece of the boundary because the boundary is built up of multiple, multiple curve elements. Um, so we're going to say for boundary in bounding list because you could have more than one loop per room. Remember, you could have encapsulated loops. We're going to say in this case that we're going to take our list of curves and we're going to append that local variable, so we're going to get the boundary, but we're going to get the curve, so we're going to use that get curve method, and then we're also going to convert what we get to a prototype, back to so it can be processed back to Dynamo as a curve. And then we're going to go back, and we're going to take our curves list, and we're going to append that respective list of curves for the room to the bigger list of the list of curve lists. And then out, we're going to pass our curves list and we should 
get there we go we got them so you can see we've just got a list for each room and then we've got uh, basically a sub list for each one and you can see it's even picked up encapsulated curves like these arcs around this column um, so that's quite handy um, you could also try to find the biggest uh, curve in each room in order to find I guess essentially only the outside most curve but in most cases I think it's better to collect the internal curves as well um, so that's pretty much the first part of our workflow covered um, it is quite abstract but it's a really good example of starting with a class and then working your way deeper back into the API to find really the origin of the other classes that really are required to enable the methods of the, the major class that you're dealing with which in this case is rooms or the spatial element class um, so yeah, a good example. Um, the next two parts are going to be a little bit more about creating elements inside Revit from Dynamo, which is something that I've wanted to cover soon. Um, so that'll give a bit more context to why we're doing what we're doing. But essentially you can also find um, this node uh, by going to my custom package and under elements, there'll be a node called room boundaries. And this is essentially just a cleaner version of what we've just built and that will do essentially the same thing, but it's a little bit cleaner, so you might find this a useful learning aid um, to follow. Um, so feel free to download that from GitHub. So that's all for this tutorial today. Um, we're gonna keep going with the Revit API for a couple more videos, and then we're probably gonna move on to some more generic methods that you can apply to lots of different elements, like getting and setting parameters, and also um, using filtered element collectors, which I've sort of been holding off on because they're a little bit complicated. Um, but yeah, we'll get started on that in the next two parts. So just a reminder, my custom package, which has a lot of these nodes I've been teaching you, um, pretty much all of them actually, is on GitHub. Uh, so feel free to download that and install. Um, so that was part four. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in part five. If you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, I make about two videos every week and hope to do so for a while. And um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.